This is your Bombay City Evening News Update for Tuesday, February 23. A 68-year-old Barbadian woman passed away today, becoming the 32nd person to succumb to the coronavirus in Barbados. She was on a ventilator at the Harrison Point Isolation Facility for the last six days, having been transferred there from the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Her death comes as the island recorded 61 new cases on Monday from 843 tests. The 61 consists of 29 men and 32 women. Overall, there are 2,852 confirmed COVID-19 cases and 2,063 people have recovered. Minister of Health Jeffrey Bostick extended condolences to the family of the elderly woman. He described the number of positive cases as unprecedented and stressed that it is critical for families to employ safety measures within their homes. Minister Bostick stressed it is also important that the elderly and vulnerable persons get their vaccines. To date, some 19,089 persons have been vaccinated. Meanwhile, volunteers from Operation Seek and Save return to communities today and will continue tomorrow in a bid to reach households that are at risk to COVID-19 and dengue fever. The 48-hour extension of this initiative comes after the initiative wrapped up on Saturday. Lead coordinator of Operation Seek and Save, Dr. Dion Grenet, said they're aiming to get a more complete picture of the situation with COVID-19 and dengue fever in Barbados. The initial execution of the operation conducted between February 3 and 13 assessed approximately 85,000 households. Government is moving full steam ahead with implementing its national payment system. Word of this from Minister in the Ministry of Economic Affairs, Ryan Strong, as he tabled the National Payment System Bill 2021 this morning. He told the House an upgraded digital payment system is key to taking the Barbados economy forward. So we've got on with the business, sir, of signaling to the all the financial players what is required of them currently equally signaling to all others through this through this process that this is the kind of payment ecosystem that barbados wants for its citizens such that we can expose citizens to global commerce and allow for the adequate expansion of business and to allow our citizens equally the same um, comfort to be able to access goods and services outside of Barbados in a way that is relatively seamless. So this has been a, a process where the stakeholders have made um, determinations and investment because as I, as I speak, all of those cards that have the magnetic stretcher <laughs> because of this process, all of those cards for all of the financial institutions now will carry what is the chip and pin technology, which is a much more secure um, facility that would allow any Barbadian, any Barbadian to be able to use the debit cards, which is linked to the bank account, sir, to be able to engage in e-commerce e without having to use their credit, their, their credit card. Minister Strawn also made it clear the bill was not mandated by the International Monetary Fund and it had nothing to do with the Barbados Economic Recovery and Transformation Program, BERT. The notion that this bill has been rushed to the Parliament is something that when we started this journey in January of 2019, um, there was no contemplation or any dictates from the IMF or anything or any, any such um, entity because you will if the honorable member was paying attention to the BERT monitoring committee, he realized that this bill is not one of the structural benchmarks or reforms as part of the, the, the BERT plan. But it is critically important as part of the government's objectives, as, a, as, a, as are a number of other reforms that are important, to be able to transform the economy. Opposition leader Joseph Adderley, however, accused the government of rushing the national payment bill to the House, saying it has not been properly scrutinized. But we sit for two years with people in the banking system and other elements of the financial community for, for two years. And we discuss it with them. We expose our cabinet colleagues somewhat to it, I imagine. And we rush it to and through Parliament. And we do not give the public of Barbados the courtesy of a little time to scrutinize the bill. It's not good, Mr. Speaker, in terms of governance. There's regional and international news after this short break.
Barbados Today, news you can trust. To regional news now, the new premier of Turks and Caicos, Washington Misik, is settling into his office after a landmark victory at the polls in elections last Friday. Misik's Progressive National Party won 14 seats to one, won by the incumbent People's Democratic Movement. Premier Misik says the election results sent a strong message that the people wanted change. I think the message, the message that this um, election is sending to the opposition now to the former government is that people are in pain, people are hurting, and they need to have relief from that. Uh, and that is partly because um, the government uh, did not do sufficient. They Not only they didn't do sufficient, but they were not efficient in the uh, providing relief to the Turks and Caicos people uh, from the COVID-19 um, pandemic. And I think generally speaking, there one gets the sense from speaking to the men on the street that they didn't feel that there was the, the government was very caring or very empathetic. Further afield, Tiger Woods was seriously injured today when his SUV rolled over and ended up on its side in suburban Los Angeles. The golf superstar had to be extricated and his agent said he's undergoing leg surgery. Golf legend Tiger Woods was hospitalized on Tuesday after being involved in a single vehicle accident in Los Angeles, according to police. The vehicle sustained major damage and Woods was removed from the wreck with the jaws of life by firefighters and paramedics. He was then transported to a local hospital by ambulance. The Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department responded to a rollover traffic collision at approximately 7.12 a.m. local time and said a traffic investigation was being conducted. The 45-year-old hosted the annual Genesis Invitational at the Riviera Country Club over the weekend, but did not compete due to ongoing issues with his surgically repaired back. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. <laughs>